Welcome again. And I want to introduce Etya of Etya Dreams by sharing a little of her bio with you. Etya has been writing with Dream for 20 plus years through fiction, essays, playwriting, and graphic mediums. Her play, Box Window Door, had Dream at its core, both for content and facilitation. The relationship between dreams and writing has created depth and skill as a writer and as a practitioner of soul guidance in dreams, image, and therapy. Her passion for writing with dreams has led her to create this series of classes and trainings to make dreams and writing accessible for others. Thank you so much, Atya, for being here and sharing these amazing gifts with all of us. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so glad to be here, really. Um, did you want to just say a little blessing for us? Etya always starts all of sure. our and work um, by saying a blessing. So I'm going to light a candle. Feel free to do that on your end if you have anything. And um, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I do like to say a blessing because this work is... is um, when we bring in dream, um, it's sacred work. So it helps set the space and uh, bring us into the field and set a sacred container. Hi, Dara. So thank you to all beings, visible and invisible, for bringing us together in health today. May we, may we know the, um, the clarity and blessings of dreams. May it be easy to know them and may they bring healing and blessings to ourself, to those we love and to all beings. May our work be for the good, for blessing and for healing. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna dive into some really great questions <laughs> that I'm excited to ask you. So I have witnessed you bridging dreams and writing together for a very long time. Is there a pivotal moment that you bridged dreams and writing together? Like, was there a moment that you were like, oh yes, I, I can see it or I can see this becoming a class. Like when was that for you? Well, that happened quite a while ago, actually. Um, I had an idea for a performance piece and I had an idea for an installation. I was doing a lot of artwork at the time. And um, I, I was given direction. I started working with Angie, actually. She had just graduated from Cal arts and became my director we were bartering dream work and direction for the show and she told me to um write this character and I had no idea what she was talking about I'd never done anything with plays before I had no idea how to begin and um I remember standing in the middle of my uh studio which was a converted garage and looking around and thinking how do I even start this? And I thought, oh yeah, dreams. Dr. Von Franz says, give me a dream and I'll tell you all about the person. So I thought, how better to know her? I'll find her dreams. And that's how I started. I, um, I had some dreams that I was of, of my own that I was pretty sure belonged to her and um, took the, found the dream. It was called the Red Shard Dream because I, I title my dreams. And out of that dream came six years of work. So yeah. that was the moment, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember that. Um, can you just talk a little bit about that process of working on the show and like how you use dreams for content and ideas and inspiration? Yeah, so that, um, uh, a dream contains many, many layers. On the surface layer, there is, um, there are characters, 
a plot, action. Um, generally what you would think of as like, you know, when you watch a TV show and you're watching something play out or you're watching a movie. And then underneath that um, or inside of it, there are so many different facets of um, myth and story and secret um, that once you start going into it, you can find out all kinds of things that you didn't know when you when you started with it on the surface. So um, that in that particular dream, the red shard dream, there was an action that happened. Um, but inside of that action, there were all these symbols and all these metaphors, and we wound up slowing it down and going into each one of those um for part of it and then for other parts of it it was an inspiration to go into a whole other kind of story so um there's so many things that can come out of a dream yeah so many different ways to work with it yeah and, you know i'm just reminded by you saying like dreams give you the essence of life so of course yeah. that's where you can start by talking about pretty much anything there's story in life right Right, right, right. Um, I just asked a clarification. I spaced out for a minute. Um, um, one of you guys, sorry, like one of you guys was um, like a director. Sorry, could, could you say that again? Like when you first right. met, I'm like missing like the weave of the, the wolf and the weave. Um, so I was um, doing dream work at the time. I was also a, um, I was uh, acting and um, an artist and Angie and I was writing and I had a, um, it's a funny story because I was holding um, readings in my backyard for a group of writers and Angie showed up and Angie had just graduated from CalArts um, in acting and directing. So we started bartering dream work for acting and directing. And um, so she became the director of Box Window Door, which was the play that we did over the next six years. Yeah, which that, I mean, that's when we met and that began our relationship. And I mean, we've been friends, colleagues, co-creators, and now building classes and trainings together. So it really has been a journey. And it feels like we're now finally bringing all of that work around in full circle. Um, to this moment, like finding this connection of Etia being not only a brilliant dream worker, but a, an amazing teacher in writing and seeing the two and she's bridging them together now, which that, that wasn't happening, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So it's a good time for this connection to be happening. Um, so Etia, this, when, when Etia came to me with this idea, my big, huge question was, is this a class for dreamers or is this a class for writers? So the answer to that is both. Um, you can use these tools to deepen your relationship to dream, to understand your dreams better, or you can use these tools for your writing practice. Um, for wor working through writing blocks and also to inform a current piece of work. So really the answer is both, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so let's- come in with your intention and you may come in with one intention and switch to another also. So you're definitely gonna, going to get a little bit of both. So let's pull that apart just a little bit more. How does the writing help? How would it help me to understand my dreams better? So dreams are confusing, you know, one minute you're in a car, you're a passenger in a car and somebody's driving it. And then all of a sudden they're like, the car is speeding, the brakes don't work. They're in the back making a turkey sandwich and you're hurtling towards a, um, a signpost. It's, you know, how do you take that apart and make sense of it? So one of the ways through writing um, is that we slow the dream down and we understand the narrative. And we also look at the um, work with the symbols and the metaphors. 
Um, another method that I use is through embodied imagination. So we also slow the dream down that way and understand the dream through, the, through different perspectives. So all of the work will help you in, to get into the dream and understand the dream um, in a deeper kind of way. Okay. So yes, in understanding the dream and then also like by seeing the dream specifically different or the situations, then you're able to then write about those situations differently. Yes, I mean, anything that you, that you touch upon that opens up the possibilities for the imagination and for life is going to open up possibilities for whatever you're working on. So the, as, your, as your lens widens, so will your writing. You know, you, you, start to, you start to see possibilities that you never saw before. And all of a sudden you're, you know, you're not just the, um, the person in the car, you're the speeding car or you're the, the post that's about to get hit. So your perspective will, can change dramatically. And then what does the story mean? if you're no longer the passenger, what does the story mean if you're the car itself? Yeah, I, this reminds me of when I took your, your beta class of this and I ended up having the perspective from the hospital beds. So there were women on the hospital beds, but then the, the hospital beds had voice and it was like, oh wow, oh wow. So what happened to you when that happened? Yeah. And that, that was like another layer of a perspective of the dream that had information for me in my personal life. Uh, that one really shocked me. That shocked me. Um, okay, so as I, I work with dreams as well, as a lot of people do, and the first thing we do is dream recall, journaling, and other types of dream work. So how is this class different than, than journaling or dream recall? Well... Um, I'm a big fan of journaling. I love journaling uh, because it, it's a practice that helps you release worry about product and it's, and it's really, really great for dream recall. Um, if you get in the habit of journaling every morning, you're gonna get in the habit of writing your dreams down as well. So, um, but this class is not journaling because this has a directed, um, specific, uh, you know, exercises and practices that have a goal to them. So it's kind of like the difference between, um, you know, putting on your PJs, which is journaling, and getting dressed, you know, and for to ride your bike or to go to work. There's going to be, uh, there are things that we're looking for when we're working with these practices. Whereas for um, journaling, to me, the, the, um, the most productive journaling is completely non-directed stream of consciousness with no other goal than having the pen to the paper. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Like journaling is like my diary versus if I'm going to sit at the computer and write, there's sort of a work element to it. Even if though it's fun, I, it is taking it to a different level of the process, right? Yeah, there's an intentional element to it. We do, we do come to these practices with intention for sure. Yeah, great. So how does it then help me become, like help me be a better writer? Like how, whether it's the dreams that make me become a better writer or the class? Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah, great question. Everybody wants to know how to be a better writer anyway. <laughs> you know, um, there are a couple of ways that, that dreams are really specific and that they really inform writing. And one of the um, key elements of dreams is that they are the, um, that images are the language of the unconscious. Images are the language of the psyche. And images are the medium of the writer. So when you, so it, it, it just dovetails um, really beautifully to have the two um, inform each other. Mm -hmm. So when you come to, um, 
when you come to writing and you're, you know, searching for, I, um, you know, well, let me segue here. The other aspect of it is, um, is that dreams are about the unconscious. So when you come to the writing, um, whatever work you're writing with, you will always want to know or think that you know about the motivations of your characters because they, um, you know, you want to know why your character, what's going to make your character pull the trigger or, you know, jump into the water to save the drowning child. Um, and if it's not true and authentic, it won't read and it won't be alive. But if it is true and authentic, the, um, if you really do get to the unconscious in it, then it really is, is alive. It's really true to what's happening. So these, these two aspects make um, dream writing um, really fantastic for writing. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm really hearing that with the image can all, like take you to that deeper unconscious of character, environment, life, story, which if I was showing up as a writer, you know, that it might not have that depth. Like if I'm just pulling from my own experiences of life versus this depth of whatever shows up in the dreams and you can specifically like dream for a writing project as well you could you could yeah i mean the dreams always come to tell you what you don't know already so um the unconscious and that that's because it's it, it's what we call the unconscious it's it's the part of us that we're not aware of so by paying attention to the dreams and then writing with them, you, it opens up this whole field of the imagination that you, you're not really aware of until you um, are kind of form a relationship with that part of your life. Mm -hmm. So what if I don't remember my dreams? Or what if I don't dream? Like how, how could I still come and take this class and it'd be beneficial? Well, everybody does dream, um, but some people have a harder time remembering them than others. So um, I've had the experience over and over again of people saying, I don't remember my dreams. I don't remember them. But then if they make an appointment with me, they almost always bring a dream. Um, so there's something, you know, it's a relationship. Um, when, you, when you put attention and care into a relationship, then it feeds you back. So when you say, uh, you know, I care about dreams and you say that by putting, uh, uh, you know, your phone next to your bed and, and having it set to record if you like doing like that or putting a notebook next to your bed with a pencil or pen and you, so you're, you're signaling dream. I'm going, you know, I have like a net to catch you in the morning and I'm going to, I, I care about this relationship, then dream starts to, um, you know, speak to you and come alive. It, it may take a week. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks. Uh, but then it really, um, it really comes. And um, even if you remember a tiny little snippet, it still has so much juice in it. You'd be amazed. People come to um, sessions and they say, oh, you know, I only remember this one little thing. And it's worlds inside those images. They're, they're super packed. It's like those, um, I don't know, that food thing where they, you know, they make those little strawberries or something that are so packed with all these flavors and, you, you know, it's a flavor bomb. You put it in your mouth and it just explodes. That's what images are like in dreams. Mm -hmm. They're full of myth and metaphor and story and um, all layers and layers and layers of meaning. You know, you could, you could, I did spend years on, on just a few images and uh, you could spend a lifetime on them really. They, they just keep on un unfolding and unfolding.
yeah, you can go back to those images and work with them years later and they may mean something completely different. You yeah, know, it's speak yeah, I've done that. You, you spoke before that I remember of you talking about like the beginning and the end of the dream and like having a frame around it. So, so those snippets, how they work with how we actually piece the dreams together as a narrative. Um, yeah, you know, um, you asked me like, how would somebody come if they don't remember dreams? We also work with memories very similarly to working with dreams because it's something that we remember. So it's an image in our mind. And, um, and with a dream, it's, it's an artificial frame that you put around it anyway, because half the time we're just like, oh, that's where I remember the beginning of the dream is, but we don't know what happened before that. So we're kind of putting a frame around it and we're saying, okay, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. Um, and that's, we can do that with anything. We can do that with a uh, waking um, day experience, or we can do that with a memory. Um, it works the same way. It's an imaginative template that we, you know, we put around something just like when artists want to do perspective on something, they, you know, they go like this. It's, we're putting a frame around it that makes sense for us with something that we can hold and work with. So it's the same for dreams, memories, or waking life. And you could work with any of it that way. Although I do encourage people to work with um, dreams um, because of the factor that it does bring the unconscious and what we don't know. Not that you won't learn new things if you work with memory um, and waking life. You will. You'll, you will tap into other layers. Um, but dreams sort of hands it to you on a platter yeah yeah so how is this class different from other traditional writing classes and I mean we're already working with dreams so that's one element but is there you know something something different that's I think it's those factors of the image and the unconscious mm -hmm. um in a traditional writing class I think that they would um you know, I mean, there's so many different styles of writing and ways to teach writing, of course. And there are, you know, many, many, many different, um, you know, beautiful methods. Um, what I really like about this is that it, it takes um, the onus kind of off of the writer to think up what's going on. And it gives you a framework to, um, to feel into and to be able to describe what it is that you're experiencing. So that um, when we're working with different methods, we'll, we'll work with all different kinds of um, ways of, of um, approaching the dream um, in the class. And one of the ways we do it is through story and um, metaphor. And another way is through Bodied imagination. So, in that method, we would go deeper into the sensing layers and what's actually happening inside the image. And the crazy thing about that is that it looks one way from the outside, but when you get into it, very often, all, always, something is happening that's completely different than you see on the outside. It's like looking at a book or the cover of the book. Mm -hmm. um, when you open it up, it's a whole different world in there. So um, I think that's one of the things that makes it really different to work with dreams um, for writing. Well, I think it would be a really great time to lead us in an exercise with a prompt. Um, hope everyone is up to doing that. Um, feel free to take a moment if you don't have a notebook um, or you can also use your computer to, to type up. Uh, Etia is going to lead us through uh, an exciting um, exercise so you can actually feel what, what it is to be led by Etia and the writing experience. Um, it'll probably take total about 10 minutes of our time. Um, she's gonna start with a little, get us get us in that space of, if it is a dream or a memory or a snippet, 
And if you don't have a dream, if there's nothing on your mind that you can remember any image of a dream, you can use a memory or a waking life image. Um, and uh, we had talked about like, don't, don't bring any nightmare. Go ahead and explain bring, a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into that for a second. Yeah, yeah thank you, Angie. Yeah. So um, yeah, as we go into this, I just wanna caution, um, we won't use, I suggest I, I um, strongly suggest you do not use a dream that is a nightmare or anything that is super challenging. Um, I, I believe really strongly that nightmares and challenging um, dreams are, they're amazing and gifts. However, they need sacred space and they need a very strong container. Um, and on a Zoom call that's being recorded, it's not really something that you want to, um, you know, you don't want to venture into that territory. So choose something, you know, as sweet as, um, as you can or something that, um, that you know, you're, is interesting to you, but isn't going to, you know, get into that place where you're having a really tough time with it. Yeah. And does it make sense to everybody? Yeah. If there are any questions before we do this, any questions right now, um, let's let's bring those in. As well as Etia will lead you to opening sort of your mind and body space up to find a dream image or a memory as well. So if you don't have one right now, don't worry. Um, uh, Julian, did you? Oh, with the documents. You know what? I haven't tried yet. So. Um, I, I'm sure we'll, I'll figure it out hopefully uh, before yeah, we I'd love to out. ask a question later, like with a couple linkages of things around the dream work, which would be really super helpful for me, but it doesn't necessarily pertain to this exercise. Would there, will there be room at the end? Just um, yeah, a couple of things. Thank you. Thanks. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And there will so, be a time after this prompt that, you know, if anyone wants to share their insights and things too, we want to, we want to hear your voices. Um, everybody ready? No, no other questions. All right. Great. Take it away. All right. So take a moment to, um, sit comfortably in your chair or if you're, um, I'm assuming nobody's standing, but feel, feel the support of your chair, your feet on the ground and check into your breath. Just noticing there's nothing you have to change or do. Closing your eyes and feel the breath coming in, in spirals into your nostrils. Just noticing it as it rises. And as you notice that, Feel your feet on the floor, grounding, making that connection to the earth and sending down a channel of open reception coming from the earth that effortlessly travels deep down, finding nourishment, that travels up and enervates your whole system, filling you with vitality and health and well-being. Taking a breath into that space, imagine yourself in the most alive moment, alive and safe moment in a dream, or a memory, and feel yourself there, noticing whether you're standing, or sitting, or lying. Are you still or in movement? And taking another breath, slow it down just a little bit more. Noticing how it feels at that moment. What are you feeling?
are you experiencing a sense of safety? Or what else is coming in? Noticing anything that's around you. And paying particular attention to how, how that makes you feel. And now we'll take two minutes, opening your eyes, and just write for a couple of minutes about anything that you noticed. So just about 30 more seconds. Starting to bring it to a close. So now I want you to go back to the same seat, closing your eyes again. Feel yourself there. See the scene. And now move out from your own body into the position of the observer or witness. And whatever pronoun you use, write this again as the observer about using she, he, or they. Write it in third person as if you're witnessing the dreamer. It will take two minutes for that.
30 more seconds. Bringing it to a close. And time. So how was that for people? If you have any insights or discoveries that you want to share, we'll open the floor for those. Yeah. And if you don't want to speak, feel free to add, you know, maybe a little piece that you wrote in the chat or insights, discoveries, anything that, um, you feel out of your experience. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, a, a couple of things of, um, so I like this idea of a car centaur, but um, this last week, I don't know, it's weird because I went to, had experiences of two complimentary food trucks, which I had great experiences with. And I don't remember the last time I got was at one food truck. So that's kind of interesting, the echoing. And then I was at a, I like food. I was at a food event yesterday and there are all kinds of different levels. And I saw people I haven't seen in a few years and it was like fun being in these different worlds. It was very dreamlike. And there was someone throwing this delicious lamb into a bowl, like succulent. Like, I guess if you would maybe having like um, milk from, uh, from a mother or something like that. And it was so juicy uh, and how it was placed there. And I put it on my small plate and I was just indulging in the deliciousness of it. So these things were fun. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? Yeah, Alicia. So, um... It's weird because um, I actually dream 90% of the time and almost 90% of the time I remember my dreams. So I, awesome. recently I've been thinking, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? So ironically, the dream that I had last night was I have to go to the dentist and I, there's a student that's assigned to me and she is very, she's very forceful, not, she doesn't have a gentle hand. And my dream was that I actually went to Toro College and my friend was there and she is now taking over the case. So when I, when we did the image of out of body, I felt so much more comfortable thinking, oh, here, here is Alicia but I'm really here and I am so much more comfortable not being in the present of this particular uh, student. So it made me awesome. feel just so much lighter, safer. Um, I'm glad. And there was, there's a lot of information there for you too that can be mine for a story or for, you know, for further work. So beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, anyone have any experience of that, you know, what happened, like the difference maybe that if you experienced a difference from the, the first writing to the, to the third perspective? And uh, how is this going to work? Can I jump in here? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Judy. Okay. Well, just uh, as a preamble, I, I am a frustrated dreamer and a frustrated writer. And, um, you know, I have, have, have worked a little bit in, in each area and really interested in connecting the two. Um, and I've, um, I've only been dreaming in snippets if I'm lucky. So this dream that I had was an exception to that in the last um, 10 days or so. But part of it 
it was great to, to choose just, it, there were many scenes in this dream, but it was great to choose just one scene. Um, and the dream that um, I, I, had, I had gotten into Yale after I'd gotten my doctorate and it's very convoluted. A lot of people from different parts of my life are in it, but there is one scene where I'm driving across um, a sweep of desolate beach trying to get to um, my class. And um, it is, and I just really zeroed in on that in the writing. And um, I just felt utter freedom in, in the dream itself. I, and this is very um, relevant to my life. I am thinking as I'm driving, my kids are little and I have no help. And, and what is it gonna be like that, um, you know, I'm gonna be gone for the next four years and, and um, my husband's gonna somehow have to take care of them. Um, but in any event, I just, when I wrote from my, the, that perspective, it was just such freedom. And I felt so um, enlivened by the salt air and the wind and the movement of the car forward. Um, and um, I, I, I wrote at the end, you know, freedom, that Richie Haven song, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, but this moment yeah. I'm turning into a childless mother of myself. So that was really wonderful. Um, yeah, and the observer was interesting too. I, I have, so it was, it opened up that whole part of the dream as maybe the healing medicine in the dream for me. So that was, that was wonderful. Um, I don't know if I'm um, jumping the gun here, but so if I want to turn this into something more, what do you suggest? What do I do? Because that's like, I can write these little, feels like a snippet, but then what? Right. That's a great question, Judy. Yeah, come to class, Judy. <laughs> yes, if you I know, can, I will. <laughs> the, I, I think the answer is that there's so many things that you could do to take yeah. it to the next step. And it really, yeah. um, this, you know, it depends on the individual and where the individual wants to go with the writing. Right. Um, it could go and, you know, it depends on what your proclivity is. If you have been longing to write prose, if you've been longing to write poetry. Um, so these, you know, these, um, these jewels that come out of the dream writing can be, you know, there's no one thing that um, to do with them or that has to be done with them because it's a, it's a template of the imagination. So it can be, you know, it's like a light. It can be shown in any direction, really depending on what the person wants to do with it. But if so, I don't, so is that yeah. something you could help the person such as myself figure out what I want to do? Like if I'm really kind of lost about what I want to do or where I want to go with it, can you help guide us in, in your class or in a private? Um, in a private, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, in the class, since we're working as a group, mm -hmm. um, for sure there will be, I think that the exercises and the way we go through the step-by-step -step that, that we're gonna be taking in the class will help people understand more about their direction. Mm -hmm. And then for sure, if they want more individualized attention, um, I yeah, I think it's, uh, one of the things that I can really help people with to guide them into where do they want to take it now. Thank you for that question. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah. Look, I, a quick comment. One thing super interesting about the exercise, it really overlaps a lot with hypnosis. And there's this term in hypnosis called fractionation, which is super interesting. So we started potentially in a conscious state, we go down, we come up, and we go down again and up. So that repetition is called fractionation hypnosis. It's super interesting where you're kind of moving between levels and repeating it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I have one more thing from Julian to share. Um, and then we have a few more questions so we can, we can um, wrap up. Our, our evening. Um, so thank you for posting this, Julian. So the waking dream, a pool of water opened up under the tree, mm -hmm. 
blue graduated into brown, ripples underneath spread into the bark, quenched, now with full vitality, its branches blossoming, flowers blooming from the ends of the smallest twiglets, a miniature sun shining from each in tints of rose, purple, yellow, yellow, etc. And then the dreamer, bound in place, he just sat there, silently yet actively conjuring images, almost painting then into a collage, yet still waiting, listening, attentive. What is the connection between dream and dreamer? Wow. Beautiful, thank you so much, it. Julian. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so, oh, geez. I mean, I feel like just from these shares, like I hope all of you can see and sense and feel the the magic that can unfold just through one little prompt. That's all we've done so far. And Etia, what would you say the magical thing about this class? I mean, I like to use the word magic because dreams feel that way to me. Um, so what would, you, what would you, what is the magical thing about dreamscapes? Well, it's because dreams are magic, you know? Um, and I think writing's magic too. I mean, I think writing's amazing. I read, you know, I'm reading uh, the second book today of Anthony Doerr. I read um, oh, another book of his. Oh, he's amazing. And you read it and you happens. drop down into this world and you're like, how do they do this? It's like watching the, you know, the shoemaker, the elves at night and they're creating something and you, you're, you could watch every step of it and still not know how it happens. And that's what I feel about really good writing. Um, we'll put it in afterwards. Jim. Um, that's what I feel about really good writing and really, uh, you know, and working with dreams. So there's, um, you know, Dr. Von Franz says that um, most most people, dreams are like having millions in the bank that most people don't touch. <laughs> there is so much inside them that is by its nature, like, you know, we, we use the words crazy and this is absurd and strange. But really, when we unpack what's happening in the dream, it's there's incredible, incredible, incredible like force and power, and um, and you know information for us, like things that we really need to know. So to me, that's magical because it looks like you know, looks like this nutty dream again. You know that you know the car is speeding, but when you stop and slow it down and really get into what's actually happening in that scene, just like all of you did, with the just a few minutes of attending to your own images, then this whole world unfolds and it's a it's an amazing world and by writing with it we take it from it being these images that are just for you just through your eyes and we bring it into this world we bring it into the world of matter it goes from being an immaterial substance something that only the dreamer can see. We write it and now all of a sudden it's, it's there and we can return to it. We can work with it. It's like clay. We can create all these different things from it. So I find that whole process magical and what happens from it, I find magical too. Thank you. Um, one last question. Why is this work so important now? So this is, this is something that is very, very close to my heart, this question. Um, I feel like we are in living in very precarious times and we are facing impossible questions. And dreams are 
one of, I feel, one of the key resources that we have to help us face these questions because inside dream is the world of the imagination. And we need that world. We need the creativity of that world to come up with ways of being that we don't know yet, that we have not already tried. We need these new ways of being desperately. We actually need them desperately. Dreams are a way to hold all the beauty of the world and the pain. And we need containers that can hold both and we need the creative imagination that can help us learn how to live in ways that is in harmony with the world and brings healing to the world. Yeah, I am with you. And writing is a tool for expression, right? So through writing your voice and putting it out there, you know, getting it out of from the dreams or within to, to expressing it. Not only, for, absolutely. not only for individual healing, but. Yes, absolutely. So the dream, yes, thank you, Angie, because yes, we do work with the dreams for our own personal healing and well-being. There's no question that that was my main goal for working with them for the last, I don't know how long, I don't even tell you how old I am, how long I've been working with dreams. <laughs> 30 years um and it's always like the next dream is like oh my god is it the key to the universe is it gonna fix me you know um and my attention is also going to um you know what it is that we're um that we're trying to create i lost the thread of what you were saying now too you asked me something and i was there and i forgot it um but yes the voice so here's the thing about being a writer, right? So we have these dreams and they bring us all this healing juice. And we take writing, by writing, we then put it out to help healing for others. So I think that I could, you know, I can name like five books that I've read in the last few months that have changed my world. They've absolutely changed my world. And if those writers had not written, I, I wouldn't know these things, you know, so um, writing does matter. It really is a way to put your voice out there for whatever it is that moves you and what the changes that you want to see in the world. So that was it. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, we have, we still have a few minutes. Will you please share all of your other offerings? Um, I'm very excited about Atia's free offering, and I'm going to add a couple of these links into the chat, as well as the discount for the class for anyone who joined us tonight. Yes, so if you sign up tonight or by the end of the week, it's $20 off um, of the uh, of the ticket price. And um, so we'd love, you know, we'd love to have you join us. Um, I do have a drop-in class weekly on Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. Um, uh, Eastern Standard Time for a half an hour to drop your dreams into the chat. We call it the morning news. And, um, and then we have a little bit of sharing. We, we use it as a time to, uh, to write and then to, to just, just brief sharings. Um, the class, of course, will be starting next week um wednesdays at this time 7 30. um it's a 90 minute class and that'll be four sessions um i'm offering an advanced writing workshop on sunday may 15th and um that's a two-hour workshop and um and i do private sessions yeah. yes great so um yes you can i do uh, dream work um therapy um, it's a method of working with tarot cards and uh, soul guidance sessions. And yeah. you can find all of that on my website. And Judy, specifically, like if you want to do an in-depth work on a specific project for yourself, Etia does have packages that she offers as well. Um, and the advanced writing workshop will be once a month. Um, it's really meant for participants have, who have taken the first series of classes 
um, just because it gets you in to some of the practices and the tools and the dream language. Um, but, you know, we want you to come to any or all of Etia's classes and events. So whatever you can make um, that is open, like we want to hear your voices. We want your voices part of this work and this conversation. And yeah. And if you right. want to come to the advanced workshop, just contact me first and then we'll just see that you're, you know, if you're, if you're clued into the dream world or yeah. writing world. Yeah. And we can so all the links are in the chat. It's, if anyone has any final questions, um, bring them now. Everyone will receive the replay in the next couple of days um, for registering and signing up. Please share it with anyone that you feel is interested in dreams or writing. Um, we want to grow this community and, and just go deeper. Um, it's a very exciting time. And thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for coming.